Hello and welcome, my name is Chris, also known as Create My Comic, and I welcome you to the first episode in hopefully a long line of episodes documenting my journey of creating my comic Six Degrees of Freedom. Um, for the first video, I have chosen a pretty negative theme, maybe, maybe not, I don't know, I hope this will at least help some of you, and this is how everything can and will go wrong if you try to turn your passion into a career. So everyone's story is different. So let me introduce myself. I'm, well, a little bit older. I also have a part-time job where I work in an office to keep the lights on. Um, the rest of the day I'm taking care of my family. That means my significant other, my two kids. Um, she is also working part-time. Uh, that means we both kind of have a nine to five job if you take the time that we use for the family and the time at work. So we both have, so to say, a full time job. That means I don't have too much time on my hands on creating this actual book. So I also have a blog in German language about comics and I'm pretty active in the digital collecting community where I produce videos on YouTube, where I'm also pretty active in the community that means i'm doing a lot of podcasting and also a lot of video streaming so that means i have to take my time very very seriously and planning is everything so what are the obstacles uh, no matter how well planned you are and you might be a very well planned out person you will know that things will come in your way and you have to work around things. That means having flexible time slots helps a lot, but I will talk about that a little bit later. Things can and will go wrong. For example, if you're on the way to a con appearance to do your um, sketches there, there's a probability that your car will just die on the way. These things happen and <laughs> usually they happen at the worst time. So that is something that could happen to you. If you have kids, there might be some kind of an emergency. And I mean, it doesn't have to be really bad. It just means maybe your kid fell on your head. It doesn't look serious, but you want to be sure you need to go to the hospital to check it. In the middle of the night, you're trying to finish a project. Like there's an image that has to be finished up in the morning. Your pencil runs out or your pen, your ink, whatever. You, you spill your ink, whatever. There's always stuff that can and will go wrong. That is really important to understand. And it, it does happen to everyone. I haven't seen anyone who doesn't have this happen to him. I know some people are more lucky than others. That is, a, like, that is also a rule of the universe, I guess. But you never know these people. You know only this, this one part of their life. And maybe they're lucky in this part. And maybe they're not as lucky in the other part. So always keep that in mind. Um, yeah, so... A big thing that happened to me recently, and this is kind of the thing why I started this channel, is while I was working on my book, I wasn't really good with my scheduling. I was in a headspace where I just was trying to get this book done. It was already pretty late and I had this idea of finishing it up before the end of the year. That was last year also. So. I was putting in work and there was a lot of stuff that came in the way, like in my personal life, my significant other changed her job. So I had to reschedule everything else. That was all pretty stressful, but slow and steady, I was chipping away on my book. And one day I'm actually using Clip Studio Paint. That is the software I use for drawing my comic book. I do like to draw the comic book digital because it's faster, it's more flexible. Um, yeah, I, I also love totally working traditional, but this time I was working on Clip Studio Paint. So I have it on the tablet, so I'm more flexible to draw. I also have it on my computer where I have a pretty big screen here where I can draw on. That works pretty well. Then I found out there's an actual backup plan that is included in Clip Studio Paint. So they give you a little bit of cloud space and there you can save your works, which is super helpful if you're working on a PC and on a tablet. So you can exchange the files all the time and like super helpful and part of the plan. So it was like a no brainer to use it. Um, yeah, so I found that I was super excited. I went to work right away, 
um, took the files, was renaming files and load up the files to the cloud, deleting old files. And you might have guessed it at this point, I managed to mess up big time. Um, turns out there was one file where I had the most of my pages. <laughs> yeah, there's a possibility in Crypt Studio Paint to have all your pages in one file. That was smart. I had this file and I totally messed up. I don't even know what exactly happened. Maybe I renamed the wrong file. Maybe I deleted the wrong file. I, I know I deleted some files that I thought were no longer needed. And when I deleted them from the cloud, they were automatically also deleted from my device. And at least that is what I think what happened. I, I'm not even 100% sure. At the end of the day, the file with all my pages was gone. So I was totally devastated. But in my head, I thought, okay, so maybe I can retrieve the files. So I went and tried to retrieve the files from my tablet. That was impossible because it's a Samsung tablet. It's pretty new and it already has these new, um, well, regulations for, for users that they can't access all the files on the tablet. So I wasn't able to access those files. So I looked at my computer if there were any files left and turns out, no, I deleted them from the computer and I guess that way it was deleted from the computer and from the cloud at the same time. So the files were actually gone. Um, all the hard work was gone. It was really devastating. And for a few days I had hit rock bottom. Like, yeah. So talking about six degrees of freedom all the time, but you don't know what to expect from the book, right? So let me introduce the book for a minute. Um, so it's going to be a superhero team book that is pretty straightforward as you might imagine like justice league avengers um doesn't sound super exciting in the first place but i can tell you it absolutely is an exciting book connor craig my writer from scotland he is really really good um <laughs> I, I can't believe i found this guy and uh, he's such a talented dude like i read various issues he already has finished various issues of the of the book like the complete first arc i've read all the issues it's amazing what he has done he's really great in developing the characters having uh, interesting plot twists with the characters having plot twists all around so you never know actually what is going on because he gives you the feeling that you know what is going on but it's completely wrong so yeah that is actual fun that, that is really fun for me to read so i expect it will be fun for everyone else to read too um um, there's also a lot of um, development what's uh, in regards to this to the whole place where we are which seems pretty normal in the beginning but it's also not normal like there's so much stuff going on it's super great I, I can't wait to finally have the finished issue one out there and the plan is to have it out there for free so it can be read digitally for free but um, of course we don't have a label yet, so we don't know if this is really happening, but th this is the initial plan. I think this is uh, how it will go down. Um, if you want to know more about the characters, because I already designed some of the characters and the first arc, as I said, has already been written. Um, so we did a CCXP online talk about it. I will link it up in my video description so you can uh, check it out and if you want to Hear both of us talk about this interesting story. Okay, now that I've talked about my project, I also want to talk about Scott Snyder Presents Tales from the Cloakroom 2. That is a project done by attendees of his writing class. If you don't know Scott Snyder, the guy literally introduced the Court of Olds to Batman, which is now utilized in various media across the Batman franchise. He also restarted kind of the DC universe a few times. So yeah, he's quite a big name. Uh, my writer Connor, he was actually part of the writing class of Scott Snyder and the attendees of the class got together and made a book with various short stories. Connor has one of his short stories also in this book with great art from Hannah Law. And um, yeah, I just wanted to put it out there, let you guys know that my great writer has a project out. You have until Sunday, 4 p.m. Central European Summertime to back this project up. I highly suggest it. They are already 
way past their backing uh, target. So this book is going to come out. Uh, there's quite a bunch of pretty interesting people involved. So yeah, I don't know. If you're looking for a great book, that is the one to get. You never know what is going to happen with these guys. Okay, but enough with all of that. Let's talk about the main theme of this video. What can we do when everything goes wrong? So the conclusion is, well, it's not easy. There's quite a lot of things that you can do and should do to assure that you keep making progress when everything seems to be falling apart. So part one that I would suggest is in case everything happens, no matter if it's your fault, if it's the universe stacking stuff against you, it doesn't matter. Don't be too hard on yourself. Like you're allowed to have your negative feeling, feelings. Um, it's, it's normal to be angry. It's normal to feel like this is happening just to me and everybody is more lucky. These are really normal feelings. It, it's okay. That, that's pretty much it. It's okay. Uh, some people get a lot of anxiety when things happen and they, they can't work anymore. Like if, they, like I said, if you, if you spill your ink over your drawing and it's gone, then yeah, naturally you will have some anxiety. Like, how am I going to fix this? How can I finish this? I need to start over and all of that. But yeah, don't be too hard on yourself. Like have these negative feelings, get clean with them and then disregard them and just keep going. There is no alternative, like you have to keep going or you have to quit altogether and don't quit altogether because if you're looking at this video, you're pretty much, I guess, an artist and you know, we can't just quit no matter how bad it is. Like it's always the worst thing to quit. So yeah, don't be too hard on yourself. Um, the second thing, and this is like, as I said earlier, I guess the most important thing, use the schedule, like scheduling stuff is really great for me it is vital if i don't schedule my stuff i'm all over the place i will do a hundred things it will look important half of the stuff is not going to be important the other half i will just simply forget and get in trouble for forgetting stuff like forgetting to do backups and boom one day it will all crumble and then comes the anxiety part so don't do that use a schedule um I've been scheduling quite a lot in the last few years. Like really, I tried everything using the regular to-do list that is not going to work for me. I used very, very complex Evernote setups that didn't work either. Um, then I got into Notion. Notion is the tool I still use. Notion is highly flexible as a tool. You can create various pages that you can work on. You can have databases and can interconnect the databases now you have even AI productivity tools in it. It's really great, but here comes the big thing. Understand how you work, how you think, what are your capabilities? The first time I used Notion, it was way too complex. I used different pages and databases and different personas. Like this is my persona when I'm an artist. This is my persona at work. This is my persona from a family and interconnected all this stuff and was was trying to get in as much data as possible to later take a look at the data and know, okay, where, where does stuff go wrong? Where does stuff go right? Where do I make progress? Where I'm too slow? And this didn't work for me either. I didn't have the time to put in all this data. And especially I didn't have one place where I could put in all the data. So I made it like a dump page, like, okay, this is the page where I just write down everything, which I did, which was also way too convoluted. That meant in the end, I didn't take care of the schedule anymore. Everything went out of the window and pretty much, yeah, that's how I missed doing backups and it didn't work. What I do now is way, way better. I have this complex notion system, but I have it dumped down as much as possible. So there's one daily page that I have that has three brackets. The first one just says uh, stuff that's coming up on schedule, like on this day, this and this, there's a, I don't know, there's a marriage that I have to attend. Um, the second bracket is just stuff that I need to do this week and stuff that I need to do like every week. So there's both things left to right so I can look at it pretty easy. And below that, there's the single days of the week where I write down all the stuff that has to be done from the first two brackets. That is really easy. Like for example, I'm at the doctor's 
office and I get an appointment. Then I take down my phone, uh, I click on my daily stuff, put the appointment in the first bracket, go home, my wife might, might ask me to fix the door frame. So I put that in the second bracket. This is something I have to do this week. Um, in the evening, my phone will ring. That reminds me of doing my schedule. That takes, like I said, five to 10 minutes. And then I will take the doctor's appointment, put it in my Google Calendar so it can remind me of the appointment. And it's also on the top of the bracket. So if it's this week, I put it down on the day of the week where it's happening. Or if it's another week, I will see it because it's already on top of the bracket. Um, then I look in the weekly stuff and it says fix the door frame. And then I will look in my schedule. Okay, in the days, what is already scheduled out? What is not? Where's the day that has the most free time in it? And then I might put it there or I just put there the info that I need to buy the stuff that is need to fix the door frame. So that means I have steady progress on all the stuff that is happening. Sometimes the weekly stuff is a little bit convoluted. There's quite a bit in it. But if by Wednesday I know I haven't done anything of it or there's a few things that I thought were, were needed, but then I haven't done them and I don't plan to do them, I kick them out. That just tells me it's not important. So that's pretty good for me. Doesn't need to be good for you, but it's good for me. And another thing that is important in the schedule is the schedule is not your boss. You are the boss of the schedule. That is really important. That is something that I always had done wrong. Like if I made a to-do list, I wrote down all the stuff that I really didn't want to do most of the time. Like except for, except for doing creative stuff, but all the other stuff, you, you really don't want to do them. Like who likes to go to work? Who likes to fix anything around the house? We don't like that, but it has to be done. So if you just write that down, that is no fun and you don't want to do that. So do a schedule that is also pleasing you. Like put in time for, I don't know, if it's if it video games, um, maybe it's, I don't know, dusting all your great merchandise stuff. That is something like that I really enjoy doing. So uh, yeah, put that in there. So there's something you can look forward to besides all the chores you have to do. And then the, the whole thing is also fun. And you can look forward to dealing with it and then it works, at least for me. Maybe you need to find out how it works for you, but this is one way I found out it is working for me. Being the boss of the plan, doing great stuff and keep it simple. That's the things that I do. So um, third thing, backups. That's a pretty obvious one at this point because I messed up so bad with it. But yeah, do backups. And that's where the schedule helps because if you have the schedule, Everything is out of your head. You know what to do. And then if, if you notice like, oh, I haven't done a, a backup in quite some time, you put it in as something for the week. And then within the week, you do the backup and you're done. Number four, handle things in due time. Like that's also part of the schedule again. Like if you have the time, like the backups, you see you have to do a backup, do it. Um, you see your desk is way too full of dirt or whatever, like you, we usually have too much stuff on our desks. You see it, remind yourself in the schedule, you have to get rid of it. Do it before it is really distracting. I mean, a little bit of distracting on a desk can be cool. I actually like it if there's some stuff on my desk, it doesn't have to be too tidy. It keeps me creative to looking at it. But if I can't move my mouse around or whatever, then it's too full of stuff and it needs to be cleaned up. And it's better to do it in advance then do it on a day where you already are full of work also already. Number five on my list is don't overwork yourself. And that is, I don't know, I, I know it, it sounds like something everyone is saying and I don't know how to put it in a different way, but it's, it's just as simple as that. Don't overwork yourself, like don't push too much. And I mean, there's one thing maybe that you haven't heard. Maybe you're pushing too much and you don't being effective at all. That is something I learned. Like when I got older, I always thought I was a night owl. I was doing all nighters all the time. I, I felt good doing it. I felt really, really good working all night. I next day I felt like I have accomplished something and I have did something good. And that was great. Um, then at some point I couldn't do it anymore. It got so bad that at the end of the day I ended up in the hospital. I was overworking myself. I didn't hear on the signs my, my body gave me that it doesn't work anymore. And it gave me like a week in the hospital. <laughs> and that's when I finally realized, okay, I can't do it like this anymore. And after that, I was actually um, documenting what I was doing. 
even in the evening, spe especially in the evening and in the mornings. And what I realized was that after 8 p.m., my, my uh, effectiveness got down big time. Like I wasn't even half as effective if it was like before 4 p.m. Like at 8 p.m. there was a real downfall. At 10 p.m. I was practically doing nothing. So um, it felt like doing something, but it was so, so slow and there was not enough progress, too much distraction. I didn't actually do much. And I realized that, oh, if I would go to bed earlier and wake up way earlier in the morning, I can do in the morning something within an hour that at night would take me like two hours, three hours, maybe even longer. And that is how much more brain power you have in the morning when you're actually rested. And do your own testing. Maybe you will realize, oh, yeah, I, I do like to work at night, but I'm not really effective as I thought. So that's like an idea. Uh, and my last tip is have fun, touch grass, meet people. Like this is really something you should do. Um, it's just healthy, like go out, um, take all the stuff in. It's, it's also great for the creative juices to flow a little bit better. Like you need to have some fun. If it's video games, if it's reading, if it's, I don't know, doing, being active, being active is also really great for your brain, for your body, for everything. Keeps you energized and maybe then you can do work even a little bit later into the night if you're being a way more active uh, member of the society. Uh, yeah, but enjoy nature and especially take time out for friends. Um, those connections to friends are important. I know some of us are really introverts and it's a little bit exhausting to hang around people. And yeah, I mean, at one point and even now, I'm in kind of a state where someone asks if I have time, if I can uh, see someone. And my first response is like, oh man, I have got so much to do. Like this is my first response in my brain. It says, oh, you have so much to do. You can't go out. And then I have to remind myself, no, this is actually good. Like these are the voices that are in my head when I'm working. Spending time with people is rejuvenating at, at, at some things. And uh, it also brings you inspiration. It, it does help. And you never know how much time you have left with people. If you actually think about how often do you meet friends and then you calculate how many meetings this this means in the next 40 or 50 years it's not as much time as you might think and so value people while you still can that is important too so make sure you do it <laughs> yeah that's that's the way i do it that's the six advices i can give you i hope it's helpful hey what's up this is chris from the future i have to interrupt the video now just to make a point because like i said something always will come up and stand in your way. And this is exactly what happened while I was recording this video. So I did the video. Um, I couldn't finish recording the video in time and I had another appointment. And after that appointment, I had to go someone else, visit a friend. He needed some help. That took me until midnight. So I couldn't finish the video then. Next day, I really tried to get in early at work to come out early and finish the video. When I came back, my wife was sick, I had to take care of the kids, had to make food, etc. And also the car ran out of fuel. So <laughs> yeah, this video comes with a little delay. So that means if you want to have that Tales from the Cloakroom presented by Scott Snyder book, you have to be quick. It's now literally, I guess, two or three days maybe when you see this video. Hopefully you see it right away. So um, yeah. Think about that and now let's get back to the video <laughs> so if you made it so far in the video i want to thank you so much for your time it's really appreciated i know this was a really talky video i was talking about a lot of stuff not actually showing a lot of art so yeah it's, it's appreciated quite a bit if you still stayed and i hope it kind of helps you or was at least entertaining i guess so um, yeah, best case scenario, I will do these videos on a weekly basis. Um, I'm not sure if this is sustainable for me, but I will at least try to do these videos on a weekly basis. And yeah, so, but to make sure that you also get to see those videos, I would highly suggest to like, subscribe, 
and maybe activate the bell. I know everyone is asking for it. I'm asking for it because this is like the first video in a hopefully long line of videos. And yeah, my channel is small. If you don't activate the bell, there's a good chance YouTube won't even show you my videos, even if you are subscribed. So yeah, that would be highly appreciated if you enjoy the content, of course. So um, if you want to see my work and what else I do, you can check out uh, my other social channels like Instagram, Twitter, whatever. I'm always on the same handle at create my comic or just create my comic. If you look for me, I'm on almost all social channels except for TikTok. I'm not a fan of TikTok. I don't want to have that on my phone. So that's why I'm not there for now. But uh, yeah, everywhere else it's at create my comic. Um, also, if you want to shoot me a message, just go ahead on those channels. I'm always happy to talk to people. You can ask questions, make suggestions, or even show me some of your work. I would be happy to see that. And of course, you can make suggestions uh, about the content of this channel on the, uh, by commenting on this video. That would be on one way helpful and on the other way also helpful for me personally, so I can see what type of content you guys are interested in. So, um, yeah, I guess that's it. Thank you for your time. Keep creating, keep enjoying creative stuff and bye until next time.